We love showing you through amazing homes. We sure do. And recently, we had the privilege of taking you through the Sidler Design home in the Southern Highlands. And it was a special experience for me because Harry is very much the, the godfather of Australian architecture, designing so many of the country's most iconic buildings. He must have loved the challenge because, I mean, that house was built to the side of a cliff. And to be honest, this site isn't exactly a walk in the park either. Yeah, it's also an eye popper. Gorgeous bush setting. I can see why you chose here. Yeah, we're only 12 kilometres from the centre of Sydney, but we could be in the middle of the rainforest, Joe. We're now descending into the master's private domain. Welcome to Harry's house. I'm so excited. This has been a dream of mine. Well, there's a sense of adventure with this arrival. Well, it's a, it's a modern day castle, isn't it, Joe? From this drawbridge across the moat almost. But Seidler is all about defying gravity. Here, from the cantilevering garage to this suspension bridge. Looking at it though, Pete, you can understand why it divided opinions when it was built. I mean, it's so different to anything else in this area. He was a modernist pioneer and a trailblazer, and like all trailblazers, he loved pushing the limit. Now, Joe, you only get one shot at a first impression. What's yours? I actually feel like we've stepped back in time. Well, the house is almost 50 years old and Harry moved in with his family on his 44th birthday. But above all for me, it's a masterclass in open plan living, but over split levels. Yeah, but the funny thing is, we talk about open plan living these days and you imagine one big room that has, you know, kitchen living and dining in it. We just passed a little tiny galley kitchen and that's reflective of the era it was built in. You know, back then, you didn't want to see the mess that you made when you were entertaining. You just wanted to beautifully present your platter. <laughs> you got it, yeah. With the Sidlers, it's all about the full experience, architecture and art combined. Well, Pete, you architect type, sometimes you cop a bit of flack for turning cities into concrete jungles, but this house is a great example where you've actually brought the concrete to the jungle and yet it works. Look, a lot of architects could have come here and, and decide to touch the earth lightly and build yeah. a house made of, of timber or steel, but not Harry. He wanted his house to be indestructible. <laughs> so he chose three materials that wouldn't move, stone, block and, of course, concrete. And Pete, there's lots of great touches as well. Even the use of glass to break up this balustrade means even though you've obviously got a really solid material, it kind of hovers above here as well as keeping you connected to the greenery outside. It's a really important point, Joe. Although it's a very, very solid building because there's so much light in and around these spaces, the whole building seems to float above the landscape. into the main living area and it's just a half level down from the entrance and it's a real celebration here of leaving materials in their natural state. Well, Mars instantly drawn to that timber ceiling. Yeah, Tassie oak, just on a single plane and it ties the plan together, yep. whereas the section, the split levels, are held together by the vertical chimney, the basalt bluestone chimney. Very clever using an ancient tool in this modern design. What about underfoot? Quartzite flooring, so it's, it's materials that never really need maintenance. Something I find really interesting, these days a lot of people change their furniture as often as they change their mood, but the scientists believe if you buy really well in the first place, it will stand the test of time. And this is all their original furniture, including, Pete, that cabinetry with that amazing turntable. That's a classic, isn't it? The philosophy is here, buy well, buy once down the next split level. And Pete, you notice that all of the living areas and the dining room, the kitchen, they all actually face north, so they're flooded with natural light. Whereas all the bedrooms and things like the laundry, well, they face south, mm. shady areas. Mm. Well, this is the sitting area, Joe, with direct access out onto that lawn. But you'll notice another thing. There are no trimmings. There's no architraves, no skirtings. Okay. I mean, that concrete ceiling is left in the same state as when the formwork was peeled away the day it was built. I love that little feature. Another thing you notice with this brutalist architecture is that there's no downpipes. Well, the last thing you want to do is arrive here on the weekend, Joe, and have to clear out the gutters. So what Harry did was turn up the edge beam of the roof and create a box gutter hidden on the other side. The water cascades towards that chain. It's an old Japanese design idea which is also used by the Scandinavians. And of course, any water that does come down trickles down into this amazing little waterway here. This creek, I mean, that is literally why Harry bought the site. Yeah, and the locals love it too, Joe, and they've warmed to this design over the years. But basically, this house is vertical things holding up horizontal things. And it's only till you move through these spaces, Joe, that you can really appreciate the genius. Proving that Sidler's Castle truly is a concrete classic. Mm -hmm.